guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about realistic expectations for brand new medical coders and medical coding students. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, I got an email <laughs> and I'm gonna read this email and it there's a mix of questions in here, but I do wanna say this. This is a good example of what not to look for when you're trying to get into this field. In medical coding, to have a realistic outlook on it, on the career profession, on getting in, on being in school, uh, being in school, the realistic expectation is that you have to study and study hard because we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. There are two major medical coding associations, the American Health Information Management Association and the American Academy of Professional Coders. Both of these have the medical coding credentials that employers are looking for. AHIMA, the American Health Information Management Association, has the CCS, the CCA, and the CCSP. Uh, AAPC has their flagship credential, which is the CPC. So each one of these is different in their own right. But again, you have to study hard in order to pass these certification exams. Any one of these, okay? There's those four major ones. All you need is one, okay, to start with. And so um, when I put out these videos on study tips on how to study for medical coding certification exams, there's all the books that are listed in the description box and there's all the links that I recommend. Sometimes I'll put the, the recommended links um, like for something I find <laughs> in the YouTube community tab, but I do a lot of exercises on Patreon. I have a Patreon channel, so it's patreon.com forward slash medical coding with blue. And I do a lot of specialty exercises there. I do coding exercises. I do medical terminology, crosswords, and word finds. Uh, so there's a lot of fun games I have on there um, in order to kind of help you to learn. But the reason that I, that I talk about that is because um, it's, it's part of the study process. So this is not something that can easily be accomplished if you are going to take a lackadaisical attitude. And, and learning medical coding requires you to follow directions. So when I get the same question different ways from people, <laughs> like the same person is asking me questions but in different ways, it, I just wonder because again, to learn medical coding, you have to be able to follow directions and you have to be able to think and comprehend and start working because that's exactly what studying medical coding is. It is work. Because again, we are learning what doctors <laughs> learn without actually having to touch patients, okay? That's first of all. Second of all, it is difficult to find a job when you are out there looking, okay? So when you're brand new, you have to expect to work at a place where you have to physically go. Now, the pandemic did change the landscape of, you know, remote work for medical coders. It did, but there's a lot of places right now that are going hybrid where there's, you know, sometimes the coders at the facility and sometimes they're at home. Some people get hired remotely and they're brand new medical coders and that's great, but it's not uh, the usual anymore, okay? So when we were in 20, 2020 and 2021, yes. Now, again, a lot of people are going back to the office. So that is something that you need to expect, especially when you're brand new. And I have said many times, guys, and, and Please take my words to heart when I'm telling you. When you are brand new, you need to be in a place where you can be with other medical coders because being remote and you have no experience, you're gonna be lost in like a fish out of water and it's gonna make you hate it because again, you need to have somebody there to kind of coach you through those times when it's like, okay, what the heck is this, you know? Uh, because the book coding and real world coding are two different things, two completely different things. And these providers, they all have their own little moods and attitudes and, and training and ways of doing things. They may come in and document very well one day and then the next day you aren't going to get anything <laughs> but bare bones out of them. So it really all depends. And again, uh, if you are working in a facility, you can get to know these providers and you can, they can be able to converse with you and talk with you. And that's what makes things a lot easier. You know, people get frustrated when they work remotely and the providers won't listen to them. They won't respond to emails or if they do, they get very snippy in emails. 
it's very easy to ignore somebody or not really take somebody seriously when all you know of them is email, right? Email or the phone. So that's the thing. You have to be prepared to work in a place. I think that should be a requirement still anyway. Uh, but again, we live in a different time now. <laughs> uh, before the pandemic, if you didn't have experience, you were not working at home. And now it is a possibility. So coders think, oh yes, students, coding students think, oh yes, well I can get a job, you know, working remotely right out of the gate. If you did not have good training, if you um, have a hard time comprehending what's going on, you're gonna hate it, okay? So that's just the thing. And I'm not saying this to scare you, I have nothing to sell you, okay? So all the pretty things that you're hearing, oh, there's an encoder, there's the electronic medical record, and it selects all the codes. All you have to do is just push this stuff through wrong because a lot of times those encoders as far as like um that are built into the electronic medical record more times than not they are incorrect because those systems are looking for certain words and that's what they're picking up is the words so it's not sophisticated enough like a human being to see okay yes well there's they have all of these things but we don't pick those up and there's a combination code that we got to use so we have to do it this way so that's something to think about, guys. And so I want you all to understand this before you start saying, oh yeah, I wanna code remotely, or oh, I wanna travel, right? There's a lot of retirees that say, well, I wanna travel and do remote medical coding. No, no, because the thing is, you have to have a secure location where you are accessing these medical records. Remember, these are people's private information. And to be private, you must be in a stationary place where you have a secure internet connection and it's not going to be where anybody can just kind of like, you know, get into your system and you have to be like in a place where it's secure. Okay. Cause it's just the same as if you're working in the office. So if you think that you're going to go and, and travel and be a remote medical coder, think again, guys, because again, you are responsible for the safety of those records when you're accessing them online. So if you're out running around and somebody uh, gets into your computer somehow, you don't wanna lose the ability to be able to do this because you compromised information, okay? So uh, I'm gonna read this email because this is the perfect example of what not to send, okay? When you're asking questions about being a brand new medical coder, all right? And uh, I will preface this with, I have answered this viewer's questions many, many times, okay? And so this is, this is it <laughs> on this one. All right, so here's the email. Hey Blue, I'm reaching out to you again. This has been going on since January, okay guys? And I've been very patient, okay? But again, can you please provide me with some tips on how to study for this ECA exam? I have so many videos, guys, and I even sent the viewer, the video link for the independent study on how to study. Um, I want to take the CCA exam. I just haven't started to study again. Me and my boyfriend are seriously wanting to be together for the rest of our lives. I'm wanting to work remotely and to be a travel medical coder and work remote. How can I prepare to take it within a few months? What would be a good remote medical coding job? I'll tell you more about me and my boyfriend after you reach out back to me. I'm romantic like any, any, any woman, right? And, and not, um, <laughs> I'm not reaching out to ask about this woman and her boyfriend. I don't care. And I know that kind of sounds harsh, but when you think about it, there's many other people that are writing to me that need my help. I don't have time for somebody else's drama because this to me is drama, all right? So that's not the thing for my channel and that's not the thing for emails to me. Uh, if you have a situation that's going on, that's your business. I don't need to know about it, number one. Number two, uh, when I sent emails about like with the specific link and everything else, that's me helping you. <laughs> But if you keep asking the same question, then what did I just do, right? And it's a little bit of self-awareness that needs to go on and some common courtesy. Because again, 
this is the kind of thing I have to wade through. I have to go through these emails. And while I don't mind going through emails because I do respond to them, 98% of them, it's stuff like this that I'm like, are, are you, are you not? <laughs> my channel is full of these, uh, these episodes where I'm giving this advice, where I'm talking you through um, the independent study route, okay? And if you don't know your medical terminology, your anatomy, your medical coding guidelines and, and studying the book, I can't help you if you're not doing the work. And so I'm not really sure what else to say other than um, if you've looked at the independent study list that is there for free. It is there for free so that you don't have to go to a program. All you have to do is get your books. I mean, I could take it down. <laughs> Because it doesn't seem like it helps people if they keep having to ask me, what am I using uh, or what should I use to study with? I always leave the, the affiliate links in the description box below and it has the title. Uh, so all the books that I recommend, the flashcards, the dictionaries, um, the, the anatomy posters, everything, it is always in the description box. If you need a tutor, my rate is in the description box. If you want your, your, uh, your resume rewritten, that rate is in the description box. So there's a ton of ways to reach me and a ton of resources that I leave. So again, it's about being able to do your research and being able to, to use the materials as far as like what I'm putting out there to better yourself. Okay, I, I can only teach you to fish. I cannot fish for you. And so that's the thing that I, I hope you guys can see that. Um, and if you think that I'm being mean, well, I mean, there's nothing that I can say or do uh, because I know I'm not. I know that what I'm, I'm coming from a place where I care and I want you guys to be prepared. And that's why I'm always telling y'all, don't, don't come up with these things that are unrealistic. Like this, this viewer telling me about her and her boyfriend wanting to uh, be a traveling medical coach. No, ma'am. No, no, that does not work. Okay. So if, if you're asking me my advice, and I'm going to say this, <laughs> if you're brand new, don't try to do this traveling around. It's not going to work. Okay. Because these companies, a lot of times they have a radius of how far out you can be because sometimes they'll have you come to the facility for meetings or whatnot. And so they need to be able to know where you are. And then they are also going to send you a lot of times they send you the equipment so that you are using their equipment. So they have to know where this equipment is. It's not like they're just sending it to you for free. They're sending it to you and they need to know, <laughs> Hey, where is this equipment going to be at? Okay. So there's all of those things that you have to consider. This is not something that is easy and not something that you can just take lightly. This is a very serious professional field. And it takes you not just going through a program or doing independent study. It takes you independently working on you to be very diligent in your, in your concentration, because there's going to be times when even your mind is going to wander because it's like I'm reading <laughs> and some of this stuff is boring. And so you have to be able to stay focused and catch all those little things that the provider didn't catch because you are advocating not just for the provider, but mostly for the patient because you don't want the codes that you select to be the wrong codes because that's going to affect the patient down the road or for whatever they're going to have to pay. All right. So that is, it's a, it's a great big responsibility guys. It's something that's, um, more serious than I think people want to think it is. Uh, it, this is not an easy job. This is not an easy profession. All right. And I, Again, I want you guys to be realistic, but have some self-awareness and, and be aware when you're asking questions to be direct and to the point. Um, because it's, you know, when you, when you look at all the things that uh, you hear from like the school and everything, um, and if you're asking the same questions as far as like, where do I study or what do I study? And if it's being given to you in a, complete list broken down use it <laughs> use it and follow that list because i guarantee you the people that keep asking what else can i study what else can i study they have not gone through that whole thing and that's my my distinct feeling with this viewer is that she has not gone through that entire list because if you're asking me this 
That means that you have gone through all of these things. And if you've gone through all these things, you would not be asking me what other tips do you have? Because again, it's already on the channel. Okay. So I think that that's uh, pretty much <laughs> what I uh, got out of this email. But yes, guys, be realistic about what you want. Uh, don't go in there thinking that you're going to be able to dictate your schedule either. If the employer has you, and and a lot of a lot of employee, um, a lot of job listings, <laughs> you'll see them say a candidate must be available from seven to four o'clock or from seven to whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to tell you what hours that they want you to work because they need you to be available when the providers are there. Because essentially, that's what we're doing. We work with the providers. We are their teammates, right? And they need to have access to us. And if you're not interested in that, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to have any um, c communication with providers. Then this is probably not the field for you. Because medical coders, they talk with providers. They give group presentations, right? And they are able to do their research. They are able to work independently. They are able to be self-reliant and self-starters. And again, they can do their research. So these are all the things that you have to be able to have in you to be a successful medical coder. If you are lacking in any of these, you're going to be at the mercy of whoever is around you. Because people like that who don't do their research and who want people to just give them the answer, they're always going to be at the mercy of other people and people who may not be giving you the correct information. Because if they are doing this because, oh, we always do this and they don't question why or they don't verify to make sure that what they're doing is actually correct then that's putting you in a bad spot, right? Because now you just copied whatever somebody else told you to do. And what if the audit comes back and it's wrong? Now that's on you. You can't say, oh, well, so-and-so told me to do that. Or my supervisor said, did you verify? Again, it's all on you. You are responsible for everything that you're doing. So again, don't take this lightly. Do not take it lightly. And when you are brand new, Start off at the facility and whatever you got going on at home or your, your family and, and your kids, don't talk about it to the employer because the employer is there for the company. They are there so that they get the best candidate. And if you go in there with your drama, oh, I want to do this with my boyfriend and I want to travel with my boyfriend and what about my kids and my kid is this. No, no. To me, that would be the, okay, next, <laughs> I would not hire somebody who is not focused enough to tell me what skills do they have, how can they help our company, how can they um, make themselves a better medical coder. That's what it's about, okay? So again, all of this oversharing, you can share with your friends and family. You do not share with um, your employer and it's the same thing for these people who are running around LinkedIn and there's so much of it lately I'm doing this because I, I want to support my family and nobody's giving me a chance everybody that you're connected with and anybody that they connect they comment on everybody in their group circle is gonna see that message right now I have over 800 followers on uh, LinkedIn the second I, I respond to somebody's post, 800 something people are knowing what I just said to that one person. And so you never know who is going to see what you're saying, right? And so that's the thing that you have to be very conscious about. Don't be sharing that stuff on your LinkedIn. Dig deep, start applying with the temp agency, make sure that your resume is no more than two pages because I say this and people still post three and four page resumes with just a bunch of repetitive stuff all over it. And then their, their job history from over 15 years ago, go back 10 or 15 years on your resume. That's all you need to go back guys, because that's as far back as they run you when they do a, a background check. So it's very serious. <laughs> and I want you guys to know that it is possible uh, but you have to be strong. You can't be timid 
and you cannot be where you just give up so easily either all right so be realistic about what your expectations are are you gonna um start off with everything that you want no you're gonna start off with whatever they give you and then you're gonna get your experience so that you can go on and get what you want because everybody's heard my story i started at the temp agency I started uh, for the, the Cancer Therapy Research Center and I worked the hours that they told me. They didn't give me a computer. I had to use the book, which was fine because I just passed the test. <laughs> so I was okay with that, you know. I was okay with using the books. And if you're not studying, you need to start studying again, okay? Because just because you have your certification doesn't mean a hill of beans if you can't pass that, um, that assessment test. Then when I went to my uh, second position with the temp agency also got me, right? Um, I was able to, to choose my own hours because I worked on a Sunday, but I still had to work during the week, um, Monday through Thursday, right? So they had seven day a week coverage. I worked from Sunday through Thursday, got to pick whatever hours I wanted to on Sunday because nobody was there. <laughs> uh, but I had to work a set hours uh, Monday through Thursday. Then they changed the schedule and I went from Sunday to Wednesday. So we had to work longer hours but it was still something that they had worked out. And now that I'm at my permanent coding home, you know, I'm able to do things, you know, they, they have all these other um, options now about as far as working remote, I will not work remote, okay? Uh, I will only work at the facility because to me, it just does not work for me to work at home, okay? I have before, and but I'm experienced. <laughs> And I was working for a level one trauma hospital and it was good. Uh, but again, you know, it's just something that you, you can do once you have experience. So don't try to get that experienced stuff right away because that's just not going to work. And you're going to be more frustrated than ever because if people are telling you no to getting hired and then of course you have all your demands, that doesn't work. So be willing to start with whatever they're going to start you with, whatever hours and whatever the work situation is, whether it's hybrid schedule, some remote and some at the facility, you need to be flexible enough to be able to do that. And don't go giving your business to the um, employer. They don't need to know about your family. They don't need to know about all these things. As far as they know about you, you're a bookworm who loves to read. That's what they need to know. They don't need to know about your family. They don't need to know about your situation. They need you to be a good employee. So that way, again, you can get your experience, move on, go do something else, and do whatever you want from there. But you're not going to get those things in the beginning. I'm just saying. So I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you'll join me for tomorrow's live episode. It's going to be very lively. <laughs> um, so I will see y'all again. Uh, if this video helped you, like, subscribe, and share, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.